The factory window, located on the world map, has many options for you to choose from. Many of these options are similar to the branch window. To access the factory window, select a city or territory with a factory from the world map. Click the Factories button. This is the factory window. When opening the window, the game will default to the View Details panel. This panel contains cost information about the factory at this location. One interesting cost metric here is the line costs. These are the costs of operating production lines at this factory. If you have no operational production lines, this value will be $0. However, the factory still has costs even when idle. Below the factory costs, you'll find additional miscellaneous items. Employees are the number of employees working at this factory. Total furloughed are all employees at the company that are unpaid and no longer working. The game pools all of these employees together. Anytime you need to hire employees, it will pull from this pool before hiring new employees. Workers will automatically drop out of the furloughed pool every month. And every month that there are any furloughed workers, your company morale will drop slightly. These lines show the number of production lines you're using. And the maximum production lines here. The wear value shows how much wear is at the factory. We'll cover this in more detail shortly. The overall rating is the overall rating of the factory. We use this value to determine how many units you produce per production line based on the vehicle's manufacturing rating. This drop-down allows you to assign which mark owns the factory. If you ever spin off or sell a mark, you can include any factories they own with the transaction. Here is a list of all vehicles in inventory at this location. If you want to get rid of inventory, you can use the scrap button here. This button will sell all reserved vehicles for their scrap value. Over time, your factory will wear down. When this happens, there is a reduction in production. You can solve this issue by reconditioning your factory. Using this button, you can open the recondition panel and recondition the factory. The game will also warn you with an action memo pop-up when you need to do this. Reconditioning will reset the wear amount and upgrade the factory equipment, which will cause increased production per production line. If you wish to expand production lines at a location but don't want to build a new factory, you can use the upgrade system. The upgrade system will add a limited amount of lines to your factory faster than building a new factory at this location. The first time you do this, it is often cheaper than building a new factory. However, the costs increase exponentially every time you upgrade. The top panel shows how many lines you currently have and how many lines you're upgrading. The panel also includes upgrade costs and the monthly full production costs. You can find when the upgrade will finish here. The system gives you three update options. The greater the upgrade, the higher the costs and time it will take to complete. When you're ready to upgrade, hit the upgrade button. If upgrades are too expensive or you want to create a larger factory, use the redesign button. This system works similarly to building a factory. The top variables show your current production lines and the number of lines you'll be building with the redesign. The estimated production lines are estimations. Your vehicle's manufacturing rating influences the number of vehicles produced at the factory, but also other factors such as outsourced components. We base this estimation on a single 30 manufacturing rated vehicle. To increase the number of production lines at the factory, use the production capacity slider. And to increase the number of vehicles produced per line, use the technology slider. When you're ready to build the factory, click Redesign. You can still use your old factory while you construct a new one. When you complete the new factory, it will replace the old one. The game will sell the old factory. And if there are enough production lines, it will shift production to the new factory. 
If you decided that you need to close the factory down, you can do that with the close factory button. You will receive some compensation for the factory. All you have to do is click the yes button. Finally, to adjust production, click the production button. This will open the production window. We cover the production window in several other tutorials, but here is a quick rundown. The top is a list of vehicles in order of assigned production lines at this factory. You can filter the list with the drop downs at the top. Upon selecting a vehicle from the list, the side panel will contain information about this vehicle. Some important data points include the inventory numbers at this location. The demand for the vehicle last month is the demand of branches whose shipping distances overlap the factory. Here is how many missed sales by these branches last month. And how many vehicles you need for contracts per month. To adjust production, you have two sliders to use. The top slider assigns production lines. Each production line increases the maximum number of vehicles you can produce here. But there are a limited number of production lines you have at a factory. The production speed slider adjusts how quickly you make vehicles per production line. The faster you make vehicles, the lower your model quality will become. This can negatively affect sales. We determine the model quality value by the sum of all production speed slider values you have for the vehicle. If you want to produce a specific amount of vehicles, you can do so by typing in the amount here. And then click the calculate button. The game will attempt to adjust the sliders to meet the requested amount. When you have made the adjustments, click the assign button to save the changes. The districting systems factory window is the same, except for any changes made there will apply to all factories in the district.